This underwater ultrasonic sensor from the DF robot is a game changer. And when used with Arduino, you can do things you can't even imagine. To show you how powerful this underwater ultrasonic sensor is, I will share four tests with you that are going to blow your mind. So far, you may have seen a lot of waterproof ultrasonic sensors, including the most popular ones, A02YUWO and SR040 or AJSR04M. There is no doubt that these ultrasonic sensors are completely waterproofed, but you can only use them outside the water. When submerged, these ultrasonic sensors fail to work. But thanks to the DF Robot's underwater ultrasonic ranging sensor, which can be used underwater not only as an obstacle avoidance sensor, but also for water depth monitoring. Since it's specifically designed for underwater applications, so the sensor can only be used underwater as it requires the presence of water to provide accurate data. With an IP68 protection rating, this sensor can replace a camera for obstacle avoidance and meet the requirements of standard underwater navigation speeds. I'm saying this because a camera won't work in dirty water like this, where you can't even see an inch below the surface, so in such water, a camera cannot be used. Finding the water depth in such dirty water is important because traditional methods like cameras and optical sensors fail in low visibility conditions. Unlike cameras, which require clear water to capture images, ultrasonic sensors use sound waves making them effective even in muddy or polluted water. By testing this sensor in extremely dirty water, we can evaluate its accuracy and potential for use in real-world applications. If it performs well, it can be a game changer for underwater exploration, environmental monitoring, and industrial inspections. The underwater ultrasonic sensor comes with impressive specifications. It has a measurement range of 5 to 600 centimeters with an accuracy of plus minus 0.5 plus SN to 0.5 percent centimeters for distances under 2 meters and plus minus 1 plus SN to 1 percent centimeters for distances over 2 meters ensuring precise readings. In this formula, the S represents the measured distance in centimeters. Let me explain how it works. The error increases as the distance is increases. If the measured distance S is equal to 100 centimeters, the accuracy is plus minus 1 centimeter. If the measured distance S is equal to 300 centimeters, the accuracy is plus minus 4 centimeters. This means the sensor's error margin increases slightly with distance but it remains within a predictable range. The sensor operates on a voltage range of 5 to 24 volts, making it versatile for different power setups. With a standby current of less than or equal to 1 milliamps and an operating current of less than or equal to 10 milliamps, it is energy efficient. The UART controlled output mode ensures smooth communication with microcontrollers or other systems. Additionally, the sensor has a quick response time of just 14 milliseconds and a power on startup time of less than or equal to 500 milliseconds, allowing real-time data collection. Its narrow detection angle of 8 to 16 degrees helps in focused and accurate measurements. Designed for tough conditions, it works with an operating temperature of minus 15 to 50 degrees Celsius and can be stored in temperatures ranging from minus 25 to 80 degrees Celsius with a humidity tolerance of 65% to 90%. These features make it an excellent choice for underwater applications where traditional sensors fail to work. This sensor has a total of four wires. The red wire is the VCC plate wire is the ground, yellow wire is RX and the white wire is DX. Simply connect the red and black wires to the firefold and ground pins on the Arduino and connect the white and yellow wires to the Arduino digital pins 2 and 3 respectively. Connect the VDD and ground pins of the SD1306 or LED display module to the Arduino 3.3V and ground and connect the SDA and SCL pins to the Arduino A4 and A5 which are the I2C pins. Before starting the programming, you need to thoroughly understand the UART output format of the underwater ultrasonic sensor as only then will you be able to successfully read the distance value. You can pause this video for a while and study how these calculations are performed. Sophia Serial.h enables serial communication on digital pins for sensors that need software-based serial communication. Adafruit GFX and Adafruit SD1306 are used to control the SD1306 or LED display module. 
Before RDT stores receive data from the sensor, CS is used for the checksum validation. COM equals 0 x double 5 is a command sent to the sensor to request distance data. The variable distance stores the most recent distance reading. Last table distance stores the last table distance reading. And the stable start and variable is used to track how long a value remains unchanged. My serial creates a software serial connection on pins 2 and 3 for communication with the sensor. This set of code defines the OLED display module. Inside the setup function, these two lines initializes both hardware serial for debugging and software serial for sensor communication. Initializes the OLED display at I2C address 0x3C. If initialization fails, it enters an infinite loop, waits for two seconds, clears the display, and sets text color and size. Inside the loop function, first we send 0x55 stored in COM to request distance data from the sensor and then wait 100 milliseconds for the response. Checks if data is available to read. Waits 4 milliseconds to ensure all bytes are received. Reads the first byte. If it's 0x55, it means valid data is coming. Reads the next 3 bytes into buffer RTT. Calculates the checksum to verify data integrity. If checksum matches, it extracts the distance value from the received data. If it's the first valid reading, update immediately and set it as stable. If the value remains the same for 500 milliseconds, update the display. This prevents rapid fluctuations from being displayed. If the value changes, reset the stability timer and wait for another 500 milliseconds before updating. Prints the current distance reading to the serial monitor for debugging. The updated display is a user-defined function and takes one argument as the input. Clears the OLED display. Set the cursor position, prints the stable distance value, and then calls display dot display function to show the updated value. I have already uploaded this program, and now let's watch the underwater ultrasonic sensor connection. I fixed the underwater ultrasonic sensor onto a plastic cave so that I can easily use it on the water surface. With this setup, the sensor will float on the surface, dipping slightly into the water. As you can see, I have powered up the Arduino, and the sensor is correctly connected yet the display is still showing zero. This is because the sensor is currently outside the water. The moment we submerge it, it will start working. First, let's start with this jug of water and see how accurately it measures the depth. You might think the sensor is slow, but that's not the case. To eliminate fluctuations, I have added a 500 milliseconds delay using a timer. This ensures the display updates only when there is a genuine change in distance. If you prefer an instant response and don't mind small fluctuations, you can simply remove that part of the code. Anyway, you can see that it measured the depth as 90 millimeters. I'm doing my best to keep the sensor as thin as possible. The value is quite stable since I'm not moving my hand. Some minor fluctuations are due to the sensor being slightly tilted, meaning it's not completely flat. A difference of 2 millimeters or 3 millimeters isn't a big deal. As you can see, sometimes the sensor stays perfectly flat and other times it tilts slightly, which is why the values keep fluctuating between 89 and 92 millimeters. Let's check it with a vernier caliper and see how accurate the measurement is. I'm totally shocked. Just look at the accuracy. The value is around 91 millimeters. Honestly, I didn't expect this level of precision. I'm really impressed. So the sensor has passed the first test. Now, let's imagine that we have fixed this underwater ultrasonic sensor onto a mini submarine for underwater exploration and are using it as an underwater radar for obstacle detection and C4 mapping. In this experiment, the water is also completely clear. You can see how accurately it measures the distance of my hand underwater. Now, let's test it by measuring the depth of this large water drum. Its surface area is quite small, which is why it doesn't float flat on the water and keeps tilting. I have to keep adjusting it with my hand to make it flat, causing the values to fluctuate a lot, making it difficult for me as well. Since we are going to a river for the next test, this setup won't work there, so I will have to find a better solution. Luckily, I found this bucket lid and its design is absolutely perfect. The sensor fits onto it really well, and now this setup is just perfect. And I'm sure the sensor won't tilt anymore. So let's measure the depth. 
You can see it measured the depth is 1.92 feet. This new setup worked as expected and the value is pretty stable. It still measured the depth is 1.92 feet. Now let's go ahead and check if this value is correct. It's simply mind blowing. Look at the accuracy. If we subtract the sensor length from this measurement, we get 1.95 feet, which is pretty close to the measured distance. So far, this underwater ultrasonic sensor has performed exceptionally well. The readings have been consistent and the accuracy is impressive. Even with minor fluctuations, the overall depth measurement remains highly reliable. This level of precision makes it a great choice for various underwater applications whether it's for robotics, marine research, or simply depth monitoring. I'm excited to see how it holds up in more challenging environments like in dirty river water. So let's head to the riverside. I have traveled quite far from home in search of dirty river water. The water is extremely muddy and cold. Right now, we are at the river bank and the depth is 0 0.39 feet. Honestly, this is quite scary because I have no idea about this river. The ground is extremely muddy and slippery, almost like quicksand and my feet keep sinking in. Here the depth is 0 0.58 feet. With great difficulty, we managed to measure the depth up to 3 feet. Going any further would have been too dangerous for us. Despite the filthy water, the sensor performed exceptionally well. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you. And next episode and thanks for watching.